Hi and welcome to the Distributed Systems, Terminology, Common Concerns and Available Solutions Crash Course. This chapter is Terminology and Common Concerns and will be split across several episodes. If you feel well versed with a specific term, feel free to skip the video, though I advise you do watch and take the chance I might have a new insight for you. This episode is about scale and scalability. I am Kobe and I say let's get started. This most important term and concern is a tricky one, as it has no agreed formal definition, though it generally conforms with the following concept as I tend to explain it. A system scale describes the deployment of a system at the physical level as well as at the atomic software components it is comprised of and is tightly bound with the system's capability to perform its functionalities. A bit cryptic, I know, so let's try to break down the definition with an example from real life. A storage server is a dedicated system process, running mostly on a dedicated machine, and its purpose is to offer file storage services to connected clients. For example, I have a storage server connected to my home network switch, which allows me to access anything stored on it from any device connected to my home network. My storage server has two disks in it, each can store 4 terabytes of file data. Together that makes a total of 8 terabytes. This storage server also has a network connection with a speed of 1 gigabit per second. That means that this deployment of my storage server, which is made of a single server with two hard drives totaling at 8 terabyte of data and a network connection of 1 gigabit per second, can store up to 8 terabytes of information and interact with clients at a total speed of 1 gigabit per second. So we've just related to the physical capabilities of the storage server. However, I did mention in the definition that software components are also a part of a system's scale. Consider that the storage server is running a single process which only allows reading and writing information to the disks. This means that the entire capabilities of the machine on which the process is running are dedicated to the task of reading and writing information to the server. However, this is hardly ever the case. We expect more from our storage server. We might expect it to perform data encryption for example, which means that the server is encrypting information written to the disk and decrypting it when it's being read. This data encryption functionality has a price in terms of system resources, such as CPU cycles and RAM consumption. And as we do not have unlimited resources on our storage server, these resources hinder the storage server's capability to perform other tasks, such as handling multiple client connections at the same time. So we've just noticed that the deployment of software components also affects our capability to perform tasks. Interesting question by the way, how would you describe the capabilities of the aforementioned storage server? Would you say it can handle 5 connections at 200 megabit per second without data encryption or 4 connections at 150 megabit per second speed with data encryption? Well you could but you would only be partly correct. Yes, I know, I did say it was a tricky term. Our server scale is more complicated than that, and its scale will be better described as following. Storage server X with hardware parts, Y, is capable of handling up to five connections at 200 megabits per second with data encryption turned off, or four connections at 150 megabits per second with data encryption turned on. This brings us to the understanding that a specific system scale relates to both the physical aspects of the system as well as its software deployment aspects. And both these aspects are of interest as hardware costs money and providing clients with features and capabilities is a common way of making revenue. Now that we better understand what a system scale is, we can talk about modifying it. Why would we want to modify a system's scale? Well, if you remember the previous statement, a system's scale determines both its operation cost in terms of hardware cost and cost of operation, and the capacity of functional features we can present to our clients and make revenue. As a side note, there is sometimes a trade-off between these two concerns, but surprisingly, 
the potential trade-off does not always pose a real restriction. For example, we can run our system at a specific scale during specific times and at a lower scale in other times, according to our knowledge of consumer behavior during these times, without having our existing clients know that the system is running at a lower scale, as even the lower scale is capable of fulfilling the requirements. On the contrary, it could be that we are constantly being asked for more and more functionalities which our system provides, meaning that a lower scale will not make the best out of our revenue potential. This means that in some cases, increasing our system's scale is desirable. To do so, we need to be able to modify the scale of our system. There are some manners in which this can be performed and we will now examine them. The first manner of increasing a system's scale is referred to as scaling up or vertical scaling. When scaling up, we rely on adding additional physical hardware to the existing system without introducing new machines or a new system software architecture. For example, to scale up my storage server, I could increase my storage capacity by adding more disk drives, place a better, faster CPU in it, add more RAM, and eventually add a 10 gigabit network card to the storage server machine. By doing so, my server remained the same server with regards to its operating system, features and interface, but is now able to store more information and handle more concurrent users at a higher network speed. Now that sounds rather simple, right? Use what you already got, just make it bigger. However, this approach is limited. First, every machine is limited by the amount and type of hardware it can use. Secondly, some hardware prices tend to go very high when dealing with top-end components, such as very high-capacity disk drives, fast CPUs, or even high-speed network cards. That means that it is not always economic to scale up. Lastly, and even most importantly, some systems are not designed to scale up well. Some systems can take advantage of additional resources in a very limited manner. For example, the 10 gigabit network card I've just offered to add to the storage server, in theory, it can provide blazing fast data rates to clients. But what if our system's disk drives cannot provide it with data at such speeds? That's a physical limitation we cannot overcome using scaling up. So we understand that sometimes scaling up will not be the way to go. The second manner of increasing a system's scale is referred to as scaling out or horizontal scaling. When scaling out, we rely on adding additional physical hardware to the existing system by both introducing new hardware located on additional machines together with a system software architecture to support this new distributed system architecture. And yes, we finally got to the point where scalability met distributed systems. Hence, if you recall the definition of a distributed system from the previous video, which I will display here again, Scaling out meets distributed systems by presenting additional localities on which functional actors can work, and by that, increase the system's capacity for functionality. Also, as mentioned in the previous video, such systems do have an overhead, as they require coordination mechanisms, which will be explained a little bit further down the road. However, in the larger equation of systems' cost of operation and systems' capability to provide features and functionality to clients, this overhead is mostly worth it. Let's get back to the example of the storage server. We would like to increase the storage server's capacity to 32 terabytes, but after checking the manufacturer's website, we discover that it supports a maximum storage capacity of 16 terabytes per storage server. However, we gladly discovered that the engineers who designed the storage server gave thought to scalability and have allowed for chaining multiple storage servers by connecting them to the same network and providing some configuration to each one of the machines. By doing so, we got a single logical storage server, which is physically implemented by multiple storage servers, being connected to the same network and are configured to work as a single storage server. So in our case, we will connect two such storage servers, each with a storage capacity of 16 terabyte, to receive a single logical storage server with a capacity of 32 terabyte. What we've just done here is to scale out our storage server 
by presenting an additional physical machine and a new logical abstraction layer to the existing system. We can think of the initial storage server machine as a single node and of the new distributed version of the system as a cluster of storage nodes, or actually as a scaled out version of our storage system. To summarize this episode, I would like to remind you what we've just done. We began with considering an existing storage server with well-known hardware. We understood that the physical hardware can limit our functional capabilities. We then understood that software features affect the functional capabilities of our system as well. Hence, we determined that the scale of a system is a combination of both hardware aspects and software components and features being provided. At this point, we started exploring the idea of modifying a system's scale. We've mentioned that a scale can be increased, but also decreased. Focusing on increasing a system's scale, we've examined two common manners to increase it. These were the vertical scaling approach, scaling up, and the horizontal scaling approach, scaling out. We also hinted that in the domain of distributed software systems, it is mostly scaling out which is preferred, as it is mostly limited by software architecture and not by physical hardware limitations. As always, I am looking forward to hearing from you in the comments section. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on the next video in this Distributed Systems, Terminology, Common Concerns and Available Solutions Crash Course. See you shortly.